Hello, this is Jesus Garza. Thanks for checking out my video on five photographs. In this video, I'll describe several of my photographs. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to learn about my photographic process. Since the mid-60s in junior high to the present, I have focused my lens primarily on infrastructure and people. I don't specialize in glamour photography, not product photography, not even commercial photography, but unvarnished documentary photography for over 50 years. Because of my love for photography, I have had the opportunity to teach university courses, exhibit internationally, and lecture from coast to coast. In the first photo, I am going to offer up an image that is considered iconic by academics, museums, and the media. Back in the early 1970s, I was a photojournalism student at San Jose State University. I captured this photograph of United Farm Worker leader Cesar Chavez while he was sitting on the lawn backstage at a benefit concert in San Jose, California. That sunny day, I shot dozens of photos of the performers, the crowd enjoying the music, and of course, Chavez. Yes, dozens. My 120 roll film camera held 12 potential square exposures. A cool dozen. This wasn't the first time I encountered Chavez. During the 60s and 70s, he was quite visible promoting the cause of unionizing farm labor. When I shot this photo series of Cesar Estrada Chavez, I knelt down with my Hasselblad camera to get a better composition. We made eye contact and I snapped several photographs. This image has been exhibited in Europe, Mexico, and the United States. The photo has been used in uh, books, posters, magazines, and the internet. The next image of the crumbling ruins of an old adobe church was taken in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. I took this photo 35 years after my Chavez series. Even as a child with my crude brownie twin lens camera, I enjoyed capturing photographs of old buildings. Like many other photographers, I find the textures and tones inherent in decaying infrastructure great fodder for my camera. Yes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I shot this series of photos with more contemporary equipment, a Nikon D800. Having been in the darkroom since my teens, I find digital photography liberating. I no longer worry about filters, color temperature, and dirty chemicals. In Photoshop, I can tweak to my heart's content. I desaturated this image, removing all vestiges of color, transforming the digital image into gorgeous black and white. Back in the 60s, the legacy of the straight photographers of the nearby group F64 influenced me. To this day, more often than not, I find black and white photographs more appealing than color. I am also a fan of Hiroshi Sugimoto, Diane Arbus, and Richard Avedon. Here I photographed a woman playing the sax at an Enos, Texas Czech Polka Festival. To me, the intersection of sax, the powerful woman, and the frilly pink dress was compelling. My wife and I have enjoyed exploring various folk and contemporary dance events. Each region of America and Mexico offer their own take on dance and costume. Sometimes you only have to travel a few hundred miles to find a new slant on performance. Yes, you don't have to travel far to photograph a solo performer, band, or a music festival. I have hundreds of photographs of rock, R&B, polka, jazz, folk, and classical performances. Each was fun and exciting to photograph. No, I haven't gone to Europe, Africa, Asia, or even Hawaii, but I have traveled a bit, primarily through the American Southwest and Mexico. I have enjoyed the amazing diversity these regions have to offer. In the sterile context of a gallery or a museum, you can appreciate the juxtaposition of an Mohawkan uh, craftswoman, an African villager, or even a Welsh miner. This photograph is of a Mexican woman painting wood sculptures. This form of Mexican art is called alebrijes. These fantastical and colorful creatures are popular in Mexico City and Oaxaca. For this series, I photograph the communities, artists, workshops, processes, and of course the artwork. From roughly hewn pieces of wood, to sculpting fine details, to painstakingly adding colorful lines, dots, and textures, this was an educational and exhilarating photographic adventure. 
My last photograph for this video is quite esoteric. One night I woke up and decided to explore a Wichita Falls, Texas parking lot. It was an exercise in capturing isolation and the dark. I feel this photograph works well in color. Please notice that the light appears star-like, almost like a Christmas tree ornament. All the while the tree is isolated in space, unnaturally surrounded by concrete. Like countless parking lots across America, and in fact the world, you have a man-made environment that conspires to save barely a hint of nature. Yes, under all that asphalt and concrete are the flattened and sterilized remains of nature. I love how photographs give permission to a viewer to interpret. Only our imagination constrains issues of viewership. Now, I have a bit of advice for you. I suggest you visit an art space on your very own. Interpret the work on display by your standards and your experience. Maybe later, take a guided tour. Understand that the museum docent or gallery salesperson typically has a vested interest in the outcome of the show or even the possible exchange of cash. When an art space uh, spends millions on a piece of art, guess what they are going to say about the investment. Thanks for checking out my five photos. I have been taking pictures since I was 11 back in uh, 1963. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.